he tells the story about this man who had two sons hallelujah you know what your problem is it's the same problem I had I thought the story was about the fellow who left home we missed the story we preach on the guy who left home we talk about him all the time we talk about how bad he was listen you missed the story the story really was about the guy who stayed home follow me Jesus said there was a man who had two sons the younger one said to his father father what's the word father means okay father give me my share what's he doing owning something he was living in the house under his father's roof what's the word father sauce he was living with the sauce he said I want no sauce I want my peace ownership so the father divided his property between them okay you want your peace he, that, that other fella got his, his in the house but you want your peace now look at the next verse not long after that the younger son got together all he had he got together what all he had so he didn't leave right away he stayed in the house and then he said, I'm out of here. I want my own life, my own family, my own this, my own that, my own that. I don't want to be under no sauce. This is a stupid son. He gathered all he what? Had. What do you have in your purse? All you have. And he what? Left. For a far distant country. And there he squandered. Whose wealth? his wealth each word is important now what is his what he took what did he took what he demanded is a stupid son he was living in the water he says I want a bucket full and I go on and now he out there he drink all of it and even share some with other people after he had spent everything he had he was there was one a severe crisis that's where we are right now in the world in the whole country there was a crisis and he began to be what in need don't look now but someone right behind you got that problem right now where do needs come from when you own things when you decide this is mine this is mine you begin to create lack I love the story though watch this this story is about the kingdom now watch this so he went and hired himself out to who to a citizen of the system I want you to think with this statement it might be you this morning you sell your soul to the system he was living in the house of the source ended up employed by the system now when the system employs you they don't just employ you they make you eat pig food I know you felt you went to the bank last month and the banker treat you like dirt pig food you feel like a beggar you gotta beg the system to extend the loan after all that money you gave them for the last 20 years you gotta beg for an extra thousand that's a pig pen. The system employs you and makes you a pig eater. That's the system. They sent him into the fields to survive. Anybody feel that way? Let me see your hand. You feel that way that the system got you like a pig? That's okay. They had me like a pig too, man. I, I felt like, man, I just gotta, I gotta swallow what they give me. I got to put up in whatever they give me. You don't need to put up with it anymore. But 
they hire you they own you they make you eat big food the story doesn't end there though but the father said something now before I tell you what the father says let me tell you what happened between this verse and the father first of all and I'm getting ready to give you the secret now how to get out of the system first of all our problem is we always go to other people for help are you listening that's why we are in the problem we in the system the person we talking to is in the system and we go to them for help and they're in the system too so everybody broke you broke i broke you sick i sick you can't pay yours i can't and i talking to you you can't help me so we keep talking to the other people in the system and then we go to the system to tell the system to set us free from the system the system ain't gonna set you from the system the system like you being in the system listen to me now get ready to go home he said look he said so the first thing the guy the, look at the, the guy is in the pig pen in the muck with the pig so the folks he talking to is pigs <laughs> they can't help you they in the mud like you they stuck in the mud like you you trying to get help so the young man did something I want you to do today it says one day he decided I ain't talking to nobody I can talk to myself so he came to himself don't go to nobody else this time I want you to just meet and go to yourself say self I'm getting out of here scream somebody you're screaming me I'm getting out of this mud today have a meeting with yourself and the Bible says he said to himself my father what's the word father my father has served living better than this say to yourself come on set the talk yourself my father have angels living better than this and they even ain't sons she called her mother so don't forget what God said he says I will arise now let me tell you something very important here the father never went looking for him let me just say this to some of you religious people in this church there's an attitude in the church which says I had a problem and pastor miles never came looking for me the father never left we're talking about God here now never went and said oh my poor son when my boy is let me go look for him no the father stayed why because the boy left the house he's the one who said he don't want no one he don't want to get the revelation he arose and said to himself i will go back to my father what's the word father so and I will say to my father hire me what is something eh we are so messed up by the system we want to bring the system in the house you didn't hear what I said let me try it again God don't hire people he's your daddy but the fellow of mine was so messed up he wanted also the father to hire him You don't get things from God because you work. This is too deep for you. See, you, you, you get paid in the system because you work. But in the house, you don't work to get things. But he was so screwed up in his theology, he felt, I have to work for God to fix things for me. I got to work for God to bless me. No, just get back in the house. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He said, if I, if I go, I'm going to tell my daddy, hire me. Make me a slave and a slave. What? 
And so he started to walk back home. This is where the story picks up. When the father saw him, he says, come quick. Bring what? The best robe. Why do you worry what you will? Where? Daddy taking care of business now. Put it on him. What robe? Not just any robe. He was my boy. I want you to dress clean, mean, and like a machine. Just, I want you to be sharp. You cut it like a knife. You, you look like Pastor Miles. He said, look, I don't want my kids just to have something. The attitude of the father. Bring the best. What's the next one? Put a ring on his finger. This is crazy. Why would a father give the son a ring? Because you see, in the, in the time of Abraham, all the way up to Jesus, rings were given by fathers to children. And the ring had on it the, the family's coat of arms. Are you following me? It's very important. The family's signet was on the ring. So every time a baby was born, the first thing the father gave them was a ring, the little baby. And as the baby grew, they'd keep making the ring bigger. And when the, the, when the kid became a man, he had this ring. Now what is ring in Hebrew? The Hebrew culture has a ring, it represents three things, write them down. One, it represents authority. Two, it represents name. Three, it represents access. Ring was given to the child so the child could have the authority to represent the family everywhere they go. So if a child got lost, they knew who the family belongs to by looking at the ring. Two, the ring represented access. That means all the wealth of the family was accessible to the child as long as the child had the ring. The ring in those days of Abraham all the way to Jesus was like a credit card. There was a signet. You go to the store, you buy what you want, and you press the ring into the wax. And then the storekeeper would charge it to your father's account. That was the first credit card. You press it into the wax, the signet was there, and they would charge it to your account, and then your father would pay. So you can go and shop anywhere you want for your family uh, or your own personal needs with this ring. It's called access. And the third thing was what name it means that once you had the key, the ring on you were carrying the name of the family you don't represent yourself you represent the name of the family so when that statement is made it's very important the son abandoned the family remember so he abandoned access he abandoned the name he abandoned the authority he abandoned all the wealth but now he's back home the father gives him the robe which means his royalty he gives him back the name of the family the authority and the access to all the wealth and then he says kill the fatted calf look at the the fatted the means there's in, 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 in a Jewish family they always had you know sheep and goats around but there was a certain animal that they would keep they would clean him and they would feed him the best of everything this certain animal that was called the fatted calf that was the one you kept for a special guest who would come to visit you only save that for those who came to like royalty come to visit your house or your special guests. You, you, that's the cow you kill for them. He says, bring that one. Story ends. This is, this son of mine was what? Dead. Shamusa. This is heavy. Wait a minute, the son is living. So what is death to God? When you leave access and go into employment. He calls it death. That's why they call it a mortgage. 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 Oh, you're laughing. Look it up in the dictionary. It actually means death. You mortgage your life, you mortgage your children, you mortgage your goods, you mortgage your family, you mortgage your energy, you mortgage your intelligence, you mortgage your degrees to a job just to pay a bike. It's death. He said, my son was dead, trapped in the system. That's why you hate Monday mornings. You are the walking dead, catching a jitney. Where are you going? Work. What are you going to do? Be bored. 
How long you stay? Until they let me go. What's the lunchtime? Whatever they say. How much are you getting paid? Whatever they give me. How long you wait there? Whenever they feel like letting me go. It's death. My son, who was dead, is now what? Alive! Life is what? When you get back under access. No more worry. No more stress. The Lord just spoke to me. He told me to buy you a car. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, when you get under access, you come back alive. Hey boys, I need life. Because this mortgage is killing me. This mortgage. Get back in the house. Get back in the house. He was lost. What is lost? He ain't talking about no sin. He's talking about a guy who left the house. The system. Lost in the system. He's been found. So they began to celebrate. And now the story begins. It's the real story. Meanwhile, the oldest son from the Bahamas was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what was going on in this house? What's going on there? Your brother has come home. <laughs> And your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound out of the system. And now he's going to re reply. The older brother became what? Angry. You know, when people started enjoying access around you, you just get angry. Who Pastor Miles think he is? See, that's why I don't tell you all my stories. I can't testify in here when everything will happen to me because I know you tell the older brother. <laughs> Become angry. Who does he think he is? See, your spirit is wrong. That's why I'm teaching you. I want you to experience the same thing. Some people will be angry over your access. They're going to get mad because you don't have no stress. Tell your neighbor, let him get mad. I can enjoy my joy. Yeah. Celebrate, he says. The youngest son, the oldest son became angry. Notice, uh, by the way, uh, older is interesting to me, you know, because older also implies folks who've been in the faith longer. The, the young kids, go and get this. Is the older one, not you, the one right behind you, who will have all the upset, who is only your number one. Wonder why the Lord blessing them. I've been struggling all these years, I've been holding faith. I've been having faith and all this, all this faith, faith, faith. And I never having faith. And old saints. Not necessarily age, they've just been saved a long time. But they're not, they don't understand kingdom access. He became angry. <laughs> and he said, oh, What are you all celebrating for? Now, I want you to just kind of use your imagination and define anger up there in your mind. What do you, what do you think he did? You know what he did? He went to the door, looked inside, slammed it, bam. He went back into the bedroom, sat on the bed. So the father wondering, where's my other son? Everybody dancing, a lot of food here. Where's my boy? Look at the next verse. So the father went out. Got to go look for him. I'm pleading with him. Son. What are, you, what are you doing out here? He said to his father. Look. All of these years. I have been slaving 
for you. <laughs> this what an attitude, eh? Look at those words. You know how long I've been a Christian, Pastor Miles? You talking about God gonna bless me now? I've been catching out so long, I don't know what heaven looks like. That's what they're saying. I've been slaving for God. I've been working hard. I've been doing all this stuff. You've been doing the wrong stuff. I've been slaving for you. I never disobeyed your orders. Religious people. Yet you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who squandered, watch this, your property, that's important. It shifts from my to your. Very important difference. In other words, it was always yours, but he took some of it and made it his. And now he came back and make it yours again. But you never celebrated me. You never gave me anything. Oh, I love the answer. That's a great answer. My son, not my slave. Now remember he said he was a slave. My son. You are always with me. My daughter, I said to my daughter, sweetheart, you got to get married. He said, daddy, I ain't getting married right now. I enjoy just in having you take care of me. <laughs> she said, even when I get married, I can keep my name. I said, no, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you are always with me. You are in the house you don't need me to give you things you have access that's my story today you, my you, your brother took a bucket of water you live in the well You are always with me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate your brother because he was trapped in the system. He was dead. He's back under access now. Rejoice with him. No more stress in his life. No more tumors. No more high blood pressure. Rejoice. He's found. The story really is about this brother. This year, God is saying, come out from the field. Come back to the house. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Jesus told a story about the kingdom one time. He said there was a man, a father, a very rich man, who had two sons. One of them came to him and says, give me what is mine now. Remember that guy? He was asking for ownership. He wanted to control substance. He wanted to say, this is mine. Matter of fact, that was the request. Give me what is mine. Mine is a dangerous word in the kingdom. Because whatever is mine is all I have. And he left home. Now here's the problem. If you own something, when it's gone, you own nothing. And there came a moment when that young man lost everything he claimed was mine. He ended up a victim of the system, and the system was a big system. Some of you, if you're not careful, you're going to end up eating the slop of the world just to survive while your father has servants eating better than you back at home and the Bible says one day he came to himself he didn't go to anybody else <laughs> if you want to be free from oppression don't go to nobody come to yourself first visit yourself and ask yourself what am I doing here I'm singing songs worshiping God prophesying but how am I get, how do I get in this mess 
The first step to freedom from poverty is self-visitation. When we have needs, we run to other people first. Looking for help. But this young man was smart. Because the folks you run to for help, they broke too. Or the ones you run to to help, they own the pig farm. And they can help you by giving you a pig job. So the young man did something very important. He visited himself, had a meeting with himself. I want you to go home tonight and have a meeting with yourself. I'm serious. Go home and sit down and say, look, let me talk to myself. Self, how did you get like this? What, how come this week you don't know what's going to happen? Let's talk, self. Why you got stress and migraine headaches and how come there's lumps in your body and cysts in your body and, and, and all the blood vessels are all messed up? And, what, come on, self, let's talk. How did you get all of this stuff? Stress. You know why God sent you here this morning? To pick up one word and just to grab one word. And you better catch it while you're here. And not everybody got the same words, you know, but you're going to hear yours. You're going to know when I'm talking to you. That young man met with himself. And he said to himself, the Bible says, what am I doing here while my father has servants eating better than I, he says. And then the second step, he says, I will arise. In other words, there comes a moment where you got to initiate your own action. Now here's something important. The father never came looking for him. <laughs> Help God, God said, mm -mm -mm -mm. start the process yourself. Some of you started this morning. You started tithing. Some of you never gave an offering more than thousand dollars or five hundred dollars or hundred dollars or ten dollars. You know, he's what? He said, God, I can't afford that. God said, I dare you. Start something you never did before. Initiate the change. I will arise. I, ain't no one coming to get me. I'm getting out of this right now. I get in a revelation that I got to enter the economy of heaven. I, I'm sick and tired of them telling me how much I could own and what I could buy or where I can't live. I'm going to enter something that has no limit. God responded to that young man. Tell your neighbor, I will arise. Say I very loud. Come on, say it so the devil can hear it. I will arise when? Today. Anybody had enough of it? Say it, I had enough of this. Say it loud. I have enough of the banks and enough of the stress and enough of the boss telling me, threaten me with my job. I had enough of this. I got to live in a system where there's no threat.